One of the things we like to make sure of is that patients really understand their diagnosis. We want patients to know exactly what's going on and how to make it better. If we don't have that understanding, you don't have nearly as good a buy-in from the patients. So with a diagnosis like trigger finger, we want to make sure they know exactly what's going on and how we're going to help them get past it. So here's a little drawing metaphor analogy I like to use with patients. I'm not a fantastic artist. I tell patients that ahead of time, so it's a very basic drawing, but it gets the point across. I'm going to do a basic fishing pole, like that. A little reel, of course there's a fish on the end. Okay, and then I have my fishing line that tracks along the fishing pole. Okay, now the fishing pole acts as the skeletal structure of the finger. Eh, it's curved, but you get the idea. That's the rigid structure. And the fishing line is the flexor tendon. Okay, and as that flexor tendon travels, it doesn't stay up against the structure automatically. You have to have grommets on the fishing pole to help hold that in place, right? Those guys hold that fishing line up against the pole. And I explain to patients, if you didn't have those grommets or pulleys in the case of the finger, it would shoot straight across and you have a bow stringing, right? You have that where that tendon just is held out instead of up against, tight against the bone. So what we explain to patients is that when you have trigger finger, you have an area where you have inflammation of the protective sheath around the tendon, right? It's not the tendon itself, it's the protective sheath. And what happens is when they try to extend their finger, that area of inflammation tries to go distally or go further and it gets stuck and it doesn't fit through that pulley and it's stuck, 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 click, and it shoots past. And then when it's on this side, it gets stuck on the other side and it gets stuck, 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 and pops back. And so that inflammation causes it to get stuck down or up, or it just catches back and forth. And that area can be very painful, that area of inflammation. So when we palpate along A1 pulley, that area is really uncomfortable and painful. So there's a couple of different tiers of ways to address this. And the first is the conservative management that we usually rely on first in therapy is immobilizing one joint of the finger. If we immobilize the PIP typically, but MCP sometimes if there's the need for it, if we immobilize that, what we do is basically put a restrictor plate so that that little area of inflammation can only go so far. And because it's not getting caught in the pulley, it doesn't have that constant friction and agitation. And so the swelling can actually calm down. Over time, six to eight weeks, we see that inflammation go down and the triggering can go away. If the patient wants something a little bit faster or if it's super chronic and has been there a long time, then they may step up to the next tier. And the next tier is an injection. And a corticosteroid injection it has an anti-inflammatory effect on that area of inflammation on the sheath of the tendon. And so basically, that will just allow that edema, that swelling to calm down and go away. But if paired with immobilization of a joint, that's really effective because the swelling doesn't go down like right away. It takes some time. So in the meantime, we block that joint and those two things paired together work great. If it's so chronic a problem that it's been really long or dramatic and they're really stuck, or if the patient just wants to go right to surgery, they can go to a surgical option where the doctor will open up that pulley and so now that inflammation can pass back and forth with nothing to get caught on. And so then the agitation, the friction stops entirely and they have, uh, they have free movement and the swelling doesn't go away, but it just has time to calm down because it's not frictioning. Now, sometimes that pulley can scar back over or it doesn't get fully released. It just kind of depends on complications of surgery and things that just happen. That's understandable. But we like to use this explanation. It helps patients understand what we're doing, why we're doing it, and some of their options in this stepped approach from the conservative of just immobilization all the way up to the possibility of surgery and everything in between. Mm -hmm.